I don't know if this video is even going to get much views because I know y'all just want to come for the drama or maybe YouTube probably shadow ban me or whatever. I don't even know. But I am here for our people, our community. I want to improve the image and I hope this video is a starting point. What's good guys? It's your girl Keisha Ariel and welcome back to my channel. Now in tonight's video, I'm gonna be doing something slightly different to my reaction videos in efforts of helping us, you know, reshape our image as a collective. Now I know there are a lot of content creators out there who are speaking to our community in hopes of getting everybody together, especially the women. Now, I do believe myself that we really need to focus on the women in order to shake things back up and get us, you know, back on track. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I like to read. <laughs> For those who um, follow me on my Instagram, you will see that I share in my stories about, you know, books that I've been reading or buying, etc buying and reading and um you know i was reading a book and that book led me to another book and upon reading this particular book it really helped me to see you know where all our issues began and i thought to myself in order to add to this conversation because you know i do like adding to the conversation in terms of reaction videos you know um, because you know, I don't really feel like there is much else to say um, in terms of like, oh, I'm going to go create my own video and talk about these things because I find that there are so many people talking about it. And I just want to add my opinions and some, you know, some of my experiences to the conversation in hopes of helping our image and helping to, you know, you know, get everybody together, if you understand what I'm trying to say. But... In saying that, we all are saying our opinions, sharing our experiences and all of these things and I find like that it's not really getting to the root of the problem. Yes, we're saying women, you need to be held, you need to be held accountable and men are also, um, men, yeah, men are saying women need to be held accountable and women are also saying that men need to be held accountable and both are correct but I do believe women need to be held more accountable in this situation now there are women out there thinking like well why like why is it always us why we are the problem or why isn't it the men to be honest it really is the women it's us that really need to get our stuff together and i believe this book is going to shed some light on showing that and hopefully as a collective we can start working together to fix the problem because right now everyone just pointing the blame at the other right oh women you need to be held accountable oh men you need to be held accountable but then everyone's like well what caused this in the first place now you know we have some of our favorite content creators who share their opinions on why um they believe things have started and others sharing theirs but no one is really going back to the the root of it so Pretty much, I'm hoping to share this video with yourselves, more so for educational purposes, to help everyone like take a step back and really look at it. And once we see where the issue began, hopefully we can work together to sort it out instead of pointing the finger and not really getting anywhere. So I know that was a long introduction, but I just wanted to shed some light on why I wanted to do this video. It's a bit different, but the main purpose is to educate ourselves so that we can work together as a collective and really make some changes. So we're going to jump right into this. Okay, so the book I wanted to share with you guys is this book titled The Willie Lynch Letter, The Making of a Slave. Now, this is the book I have, right? And this book um, is, it's, it's, it's really, it's really tiny. It's like a little pamphlet type book, but it's, it does contain the letter as well as um, the Southern Horrors Lynch Law in All Its Phases, right, by Ida B. Wells. Now, it's really short, but the main part I'm going to read is the Willie Lynch letter. Now, I've heard about this letter, but I've never actually read it myself. I've only heard about bits and pieces. I've only heard bits and pieces of it, but never actually read it myself. So I thought I wanted to read it and 
understand what's going on, why people talk about lynching and all of these things, or where lynching came from, etc. You know, and um, yeah, I was quite blown away with other things that I discovered in this. So I wanted to share it with you guys and um, hopefully you guys enjoy and you know, we can start doing some work together. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the Willie Lynch letter. This speech was delivered by Willie Lynch on the bank of the James River in the colony of Virginia in 1712. Lynch was a British slave owner in the West Indies. He was invited to the colony of Virginia in 1712 to teach his methods to slave owners there. The term lynching is derived from his last name. December 25th, 1712. So this is when this was put together. And the letter begins. Gentlemen, I greet you here on the bank of the James River in the year of our Lord 1712. First, I shall thank you, the gentlemen of the colony of Virginia, for bringing me here. I am here to help you solve some of your problems with slaves. Your invitation reached me on my modest plantation in the West Indies, where I have experimented with some of the newest and still the oldest methods for control of slaves. Ancient Romes would envy us if my program is implemented. As our boat sailed south on the James River, named for our illustrious king, whose version of the Bible we cherish, I saw enough to know that your problem is not unique. Now I'm going to read that sentence once again and hopefully it's sink in and you guys can start, you know, reflecting on some of the books we cherish not necessarily myself but we as a collective cherish as our boat sailed south on the james river named for our illustrious king whose version of the bible we cherish i saw enough to know that your problem is not unique while rome used cords of wood as crosses for standing human bodies along its highways in great numbers, you are here using the tree and the rope on occasions. I caught the whiff of a dead slave hanging from a tree a couple miles back. You are not only losing valuable stock by hangings, you are having uprisings, slaves are running away, your crops are sometimes left in the fields too long for maximum profit, you suffer occasional fires, your animals are killed. Gentlemen, you know what your problems are. I do not need to elaborate. I am not here to enumerate your problems. I am here to introduce you to a method of solving them. In my bag here, I have a foolproof method for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. My method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseer can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves and make the differences bigger. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control. These methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies and it will work throughout the South. Take this simple little list of differences and think about them. On top of my list is age, but it's there only because it starts with an A. Now this is where we need to start paying attention as well, okay? It says, the second is color or shade, there is intelligence, size, sex, size of plantations and status on plantations, attitude of owners, whether the slaves live in the valley, on a hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, or is tall or short. Now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action but before that, I shall assure you that the distrust is stronger than trust and envy stronger than adulation, respect, or admiration. The black slaves, after receiving this indoctrination, 
shall carry on and will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Don't forget, you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male and the young black male against the old black male. You must use the dark skinned slaves versus the light skinned slaves and the light skinned slaves versus the dark skinned slaves. You must use the female versus the male and the male versus the female. You must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all blacks. It is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. So right there, we can hear how they're talking about how we are going to pitch each other against the other, right? Male against female, female against male, young against old, old against young, light skin, against dark skin, dark skin against light skin. We see all of this still happening today and this was written in 1712. So this goes all the way back to the 18th century. Okay, so they have been instilling this since, well, prior to 18, um, 1712 because um, Mr. Lynch here was saying that he was using this on his plantation before. Okay, so we're seeing that this has been going on for centuries. Okay, since the 17th century, according to this letter, I'm um, sorry, 18th century, according to this letter, it could even have been from the 17th century as well. Okay, so when we're seeing women and men kind of going against each other, this gender war that's going on, try and understand that this has been implemented for a very long time, but it gets even more interesting. So we're gonna continue. All right, so it says, gentlemen, these kits are your keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and the children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intensely for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful of each other. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's make a slave. It was the interest and business of slaveholders to study human nature and the slave nature in particular with a view to practical results. I and many of them attained astonishing profi proficiency in this direction. They had to deal not with earth, wood and stone, but with men and by every regard they had for their own safety and prosperity, they needed to know the material on which they were to work. Conscious of the injustice and wrong they were every hour perpetuating and knowing that they themselves would do, were they the victims of such wrongs? So they're talking about, you know, Lynch and his people. All right, let me just read that again. Conscious, conscious of the injustice and wrong they were let me say that again. <laughs> Conscious of the injustice and wrong they were every hour perpetuating and knowing what they themselves would do. Were they the victims of such wrongs? They were constantly looking for the first sign of the dreaded retribution. They watched, therefore, with skilled and practiced eyes and learned to read with great accuracy the state of mind and heart of the slave through his sable face. Sable means black. Okay. Unusual so sobriety, that word's kind of weird for me, um, apparent abstractions, sullenness and indifference indeed, any mood out of the common was afforded ground for suspicion and inquiry. Let us make a slave. What do we need? First of all, we need a black nigger man, a pregnant nigger woman, and her baby nigger boy. Second, we will use the same basic principle that we use in breaking a horse, combined with some more sustaining factors. What we do with the horses 
is that we break them from one form of life to another. That is, we reduce them from their natural state in nature. Whereas nature provides them with the natural capacity to capacity to take care of their offspring we break that natural string of independence from them and thereby create a dependency status so that we may be able to get from them useful production for our business and pleasure so there they're talking about how they break horses and they're gonna show us how they use the same tactics in breaking the melanated people Cardinal principles for making a Negro. For fear that the future generations may not understand the principles of breaking both of the beast together, the nigger and the horse, we understand that short range planning economic results in periodic economic chaos, so that to avoid turmoil in the economy, it requires us to have breadth and depth in long range comprehensive planning, articulating both skill sharp perceptions. We lay down the following principles for long range, comprehensive economic planning. Both horse and niggers is not good to the economy in the wild or natural state. So with our ancestors in their natural state, they're saying this is not good for their economy. Hence why they have to break us, right? Anyway, both must be broken and tied together for orderly production. For orderly future, special and particular attention must be paid to the female and the youngest offspring. Both must be crossbred to produce a variety and division of labor. Both must be taught to respond to a peculiar new language. <sighs> Psychological and physical instruction of containment must be created for both. Psychological. They're going to get in here now. We hold the six cardinal principles as truth to be self-evident based upon the following based upon the following the discourse concerning the economics of breaking and tying the horse and the nigger together all inclusive of the six principles laid down about note neither principle alone will suffice for good economics all principles must be employed for orderly good of the nation so they're saying you cannot just use one of these principles we need to use all of them for the good of the nation not a nation that includes us their nation okay accordingly both a wild horse and a wild or nature nigger is dangerous even if captured for they will have the tendency to seek their customary freedom and in doing so might kill you in your sleep <laughs> this is why they take us away from who we really are because they know if we know who we really are and tap back into it they said it over here they fear that dreaded retribution, which will come one day. It's something called karma. It happens. Okay. Um, let's continue. Where am I? <laughs> okay. So they will, they might kill you in your sleep. You cannot rest. They sleep while you are awake and are awake while you are asleep. They are dangerous near the family house and it requires too much labor to watch them away from the house. We're going to get into it. It's, 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 it's coming. If it hasn't come for you guys already, but yeah, more is to come. Above all, you cannot get them to work in this natural state. Hence, both the horse and the nigger must be broken. That it, that is breaking them from one form of mental life to another keep the body take the mind in other in other words break the will to resist now the breaking process is the same for both the horse and the nigger 
only slightly varying in degrees. But as we said before, there is an art in long range, in long range economic planning. You must keep your eye and thoughts on the female and the offspring of the horse and the nigger. A brief discourse in offspring development will shed light on the key to sound economic principles. Pay little attention to the generation of original breaking, but concentrate on future generations.